Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We're going to work through how to find the definitions for derivative of inverse tangent and cotangent functions and work a couple of examples of derivatives using those and the chain rule in this video. So if we want to find the derivative of inverse tangent of x, we think of y being the inverse tangent of x, we want to find dy dx then, or y prime. So remember another way to write y equals inverse tan of x is that tangent of y equals x. This is telling us about a right triangle. Tangent of y means we could think of y as an angle in a right triangle. And remember that tangent is the opposite over the adjacent in a right triangle. So if I think of x as a fraction as x over 1, then my opposite side is x and my adjacent side is 1 in the triangle. If I use Pythagorean theorem to solve for the hypotenuse, which I can't see yet, I take this thing squared plus this thing squared equals this thing squared. So if we set that up and solve, we actually get that the hypotenuse is the square root of 1 plus x squared. Now let's move to the derivative part. So thinking derivative with respect to x of tangent y equals x, we would do this derivative implicitly. So notice we have a function of y here. So when we take the derivative of tangent y, we do get secant squared y. But remember, because y is also a function of x, the chain rule gives that we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside, and the derivative of y is dy dx. We go ahead and do the derivative with respect to x on the other side. Now that's just plain old x there, so the derivative of that is 1. And to solve for dy dx, which is what we wanted, we just go ahead and divide both sides by this secant squared y, and we get that dy dx is equal to 1 over secant squared y. Now remember that secant of y is the reciprocal function of cosine of y, so since this is really 1 over secant squared of y, this is the same as saying cosine squared of y, just due to the reciprocal identity. So if we think about knowing what cosine of y is, now to convert this expression back to x's, we can go to our triangle and remember that cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse side in our right triangle. So here our adjacent side is 1, and our hypotenuse is now this square root of 1 plus x squared. Now if we think about having adjacent over hypotenuse 1 over this square root, but that's just cosine of y, if we square it, that's actually going to get rid of the square root. So our derivative here for the inverse tangent function is actually going to be 1 over 1 plus x squared. We'll talk you briefly through this same process with inverse cotangent of x. So we'll go ahead and think of y equals inverse cotangent of x as cotangent of y equals x. We'll set up our right triangle again, and remember that cotangent of something is the reciprocal of tangent. So cotangent of y is actually the adjacent over the opposite, where tangent was the opposite over adjacent. So if I think of my x again as x over 1, then that puts 1 on the opposite side and x on the adjacent side. When we use Pythagorean theorem to solve for the hypotenuse, you'll see that we get the same square root of 1 plus x squared, because these are the same statements, they're just on different sides from where they were before. So now if we go to the derivative part and we say derivative with respect to x of cotangent y equals x, the derivative of cotangent, remember, is negative cosecant squared of y, and then the chain rule again gives us times dy dx. The derivative of x on the right side is again 1, and then we divide both sides by the negative cosecant squared y term, giving us dy dx by itself. Remember that cosecant of y is the reciprocal of sine of y, so this negative 1 over cosecant squared y is actually the same as negative sine squared of y. Now if we want to replace this, we'll go back to our triangle and look for information about sine of y. Remember that sine of y is the opposite over the hypotenuse in our triangle. Our opposite here is now 1. Our hypotenuse is again the square root of 1 plus x squared. So we need to square, which would remove the root again, so we'll get 1 over 1 plus x squared, but the negative out front tells us that this derivative formula is actually negative 1 over 1 plus x squared. We've got our formulas up here in the corner. Let's go ahead and work out a few of these derivatives. So for the derivative with respect to x of inverse tangent of 3x, we'll go ahead and use this inverse tangent rule here. We'll be replacing x with 3x, and then we'll go ahead and make sure that we use the chain rule to get the correct derivative. So the derivative of inverse tangent of 3x would be 1 over 1 plus the quantity 3x squared, and then the chain rule tells us the derivative of the inside, which we need to multiply by, we'll get 3 for that. So if we go ahead and simplify here, we'll have a 3 on the top, 
And then the bottom will actually want to say one plus nine x squared for this derivative. Looking at the second one here, derivative with respect to x of inverse cotangent of square root x. So we'll be using the negative definition here, right? So we will have negative one over one plus whatever's in here squared, right? So that will be negative one over one plus whatever's in the cotangent, which is square root x, we'll have that squared. Chain rule says times the derivative of the inside. Now, remember that square root x is really x to the one-half power, so you can think of this as a power rule. So our chain rule is actually going to give us a one-half coming out front. The power will go down by one, so we'll get x to the minus one-half. And now we just need to clean these up a bit. So first thing, let's go ahead and fix this. So we'll have negative one over one plus the square root of x squared would just give us x. Now, this is really saying here, I'll write it next to it, I have two in the bottom, and this x is also in the bottom because of the negative exponent. So I have a two down below, and then I also have an x down below, and because this is the one-half power, we also have it in a square root. So if we do a bit of simplifying with this, we'll say negative one over two root x times the quantity one plus x. Looking at a couple others, remember inverse tangent and inverse cotangent can also be written as arc tangent and arc cotangent. You might have seen those in trigonometry possibly before. So here we'll just be using the inverse tangent definition. So we'll have one over one plus whatever's inside of the function squared. So it will be one over one plus five x squared all squared. And now don't forget the chain rule, of course. The chain rule says times the derivative of the inside. This is a power rule. The 2 comes out front and multiplies the 5 that's already there. The power goes down by 1, so we just get x. So if we rewrite this more nicely, then we'll have 10x on the top. And on the bottom, we'll actually have 1 plus 25x to the 4. Looking at our last example with the inverse cotangent or arc cotangent of x cubed, we'll be using the negative formula here. So this will be negative one over one plus whatever's inside of the function squared, one plus x cubed, all squared. And don't forget your chain rule, times the derivative of the inside. This is a power rule. The three comes out front and the power goes down by one. So we get x squared with our three cleaning this up on the top and then the bottom here we get negative 3x squared on the top and on the bottom we'll say 1 plus x to the 6. Okay everyone hopefully this helps you with your definitions as well as some examples involving the chain rule of these inverse tangent and cotangent derivatives. Our next video is about the derivatives of inverse secant and cosecant so check that out. We'll see you then.